May I welcome you to these exciting studies, uh, particular studies, uh, studies that have to do with the total history of humankind, and studies that will enlighten you as to what God did in the, what we call Old Testament, in the old days, and what God has finally done. It's really very exciting. Uh, there are a number of these lessons that we will be bringing to you. Uh, for example, the birth of altars and offerings to the Most High uh, will be our first one, uh, which you will receive either part of or all of today. And the patriarchs offerings, the, 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 the great solitary men, you know, a, a man like, like Noah, uh, a, a man like Abel, uh, a, man, a man like Abraham, uh, the, the patriarchs offerings, uh, those men that stood tall and stood high and stood strong, uh, their offerings unto the Most High. And then a nation makes an altar and an offering. You can see God moving into uh, a larger situation where a man offered a lamb for one person, and then we're offering one for a whole nation. And, and uh, we're getting closer to the final offering when we do a thing like that. Then we study the creatures the, the animals that were permitted uh, to be offered as a burnt offering unto the Lord and what they represent and what kind of animals they were. Then we go into what we call the, the sin offering, the trespass offering, the peace offering, the wave offering, the, the ignorance offering. <laughs> there is one. And, and the accident offering. There's a special offering for accidents that take place. The offerings of the, of, of the poor and, and then the the, the may be offerings. That, that's, that's, that's when you really in, enjoy, and that's not in the Bible. That's my own name for that may be offering, but it, it is in the Bible. And the offering of sacrifice of praise, and the meal offering, and then the final offering. Uh, I believe you will certainly enjoy and you will profit much uh, from these very special and particular uh, uh, lectures on how people have worshipped, you know. <laughs> It'll bring you right up to date to what God has done, is doing, and will do in this vital area uh, to human existence. I know that you will enjoy it. The birth of altars and sacrifices. In the history of planet Earth, uh, man has always, from his origin, from his beginnings, uh, he has always erected altars, and he has made offerings and sacrifices to the Most High God. Um, this is not something that started later. It is not an appendix to human living. It began with man. It has continued uh, from the first man until this day. And so therefore, we're not talking about uh, something that uh, accidentally uh, or evolutionary came into being. We, we speak of a fundamental fact that man began with it, he continues with it, and you mustn't forget it. You see, that makes it tremendously important. These altars and offerings uh, began with man's earliest experiences. You know, they, 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 they began with, the, with his primary experiences to where he, he, he began with these things, and they became a fundamental part of his total thinking and of his total being. In the Garden of Eden, where, where the human experience did begin, Adam and Eve, as you and I both know, volitionally and intelligently and, uh, and uh, rebelliously uh, sinned against the Most High. They were told what to do and what not to do, and they maliciously, and as I said, volitionally, from the, from the will of their own intellect and from the will of their own personality that God had given them, their own will, they decided to uh, listen to uh, Lucifer and they decided to disobey God, to rebel against God. It's a much greater affair than most of us have ever imagined. And then uh, it, the, the great debacle of the human race took place when Adam and Eve fell from the majesty and the glory of walking with the Most High in the evening times, uh, fell into complete degradation. And, and uh, it's a sorrowful uh, uh, picture on the, uh, on the history of all mankind. When they rebelled against the, old, the great Elohim, the, the creator of, of themselves, and they knew that he was their creator. But after they had sinned, 
the, the great compassionate one, the Elohim. I came down into the garden and he found man in certain situations. Number one, he found him hidden. <laughs> yeah, he found him hidden. Uh, when people start hiding, uh, they are following the wrong master. They're following Satan. They're following Lucifer, hiding. And, and they were hiding from God. They were not hiding from the lions and hiding from the bears and, and, and hiding from the rabbits. They were hiding from Elohim, the mighty God who created them. They were hiding from Him. Isn't that amazing? There are people like that today, hiding from God. They're not hiding from their mate, from their husband or the wife or the children. They're hiding from God. And that's where they, they our first parents, Adam and Eve, when God discovered them in their transgression, they were hiding from Him. They were not hiding from the roses. And they, they were not hiding uh, from the lilies. And they were not hiding from the apple trees, banana trees. They were hiding from God, and He discovered them. Not only were they hiding, they were trembling. They were trembling. Man had never trembled before. No, no, man had never trembled before, but they were shaking and trembling. Their, their emotions were devastated. And God looked upon His own creation. He had made them, as Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27 tells us, that God made them that they have dominion. <laughs> and the one that had dominion was hiding and trembling. Well, you don't have dominion hiding and trembling. When you have dominion, you're out in front. And your shoulders are high and uh, rejoicing is in your heart. They had lost the dominion that God had given them. Not only were they hiding from the Most High, they were trembling. Their, their physical being, the first people that ever trembled was Adam and Eve. Transgression caused them to tremble. That's what will cause you to tremble. When you meet the Most High one day to give an account for your life, you will tremble before Him if you're not right with Him. So He found them, and they were hiding, they were trembling, and they were naked, naked. <laughs> He had clothed them with His own glory, but in transgression, they lost the glory and looked at themselves and said, say, we lost our coat of light and beauty and loveliness as glorious as the rainbow. We, we have lost it. We are naked. And they were ashamed. They were ashamed of their nakedness. And I'll tell you something very interesting, and that is when I have traveled among most primitive people, like in the, in the Gran Chaco Boreal, in the, in the very heart of the, of the great South American continent where very few white men have ever gone, that when I spoke to the Indians who had never seen a wristwatch before, never seen a movie camera before, when I spoke to those people and they received Christ, the ladies would come around and say, do you have a piece of cloth I could put around the upper part of my body? And I said, well, you don't need any. It's very warm here. Yeah, but says, uh, uh, we are ashamed. Well, how did you get to be ashamed? Well, I don't know. Uh, we just don't like it anymore. When you come into the Lord Jesus Christ, you, you, you come into a place where you know you need covering for your body. The devil disrobes you, and God robes you with the garments of righteousness, the Bible says. We, we are robed in righteousness with God. But they were naked and ashamed of themselves for being naked, and there were only two of them there, and yet they were ashamed of their own naked. This is what God found in transgression. This is what God saw when man rebelled against him. And then it says that they were ashamed. They didn't want to talk to God anymore. And, and that's, a, that's, a so, that's a great truth re related to sinners. You know, they're ashamed to talk to God. They have become devastated by evil, and they're ashamed to talk to God. <laughs> when a person is ashamed to talk to God, that's when he needs to talk to him. That's when he needs to say, hey, God, I got something to say to you. I am a sinner. Please save me, and he'll do it, and you won't be ashamed anymore. And, and, and then he found them fearful. They were trembling with fear. He found them fearful, and it says we were afraid. Fear was born in transgression. All fear is related to transgression. In 1 John, it, it says that fear has torment. That's right. And it says God is love, and perfect love casteth out fear. You see? So when you have the fullness of God, you have no fear. If you have fear in your life, in that area, you don't have God there. No, you don't have God there. Because in the fullness of God, there is no fear. You see, there just simply is not any fear. Oh, please, please, please. Uh, you can see where we needed some altars, altars and offerings here, can't you? A man found himself in bad shape, and, and that's the same with you. What you need is an altar. 
uh, you know, to ask repentance of your sins, to get rid of all this junk. There, there, there are millions of people today that are dying in Adam's transgression, not because he sinned, but because you have followed him into transgression. And you can reverse yourself and come into the Lord Jesus Christ, be forgiven of your sins, live joyfully on this earth, and live forever with the Almighty One. Hey, that's great. We'd like for you to know Him. Whom to know is life eternal, and whom the Son sets free is free indeed, free from remorse, free from shame, free from fear, <laughs> free from trembling. Oh, what a wonderful thing it is to be, know that you are free. And so Adam and Eve openly broke communion uh, with the Most High God. Uh, it's told us in, in Genesis 3 and 13, where it says, Adam and Eve appealed to God for forgiveness of their sin, and they did it on the basis of a demonic deception. Now, you ought to know that. Some of us don't read the first page in the Bible. We read away along in the middle somewhere in the first page of the Bible. But they, they asked that God would forgive them on the basis of a demonic deception. Uh, it reads uh, in, in Genesis 3.13, The Lord God... Uh, said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent uh, beguiled me, and I did eat. The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. <laughs> uh, she said, Don't blame me. Blame the serpent. Now, God did blame her. Of course God blamed her. Uh, you are responsible for everything you did. And that little saying that goes around, The devil made me do it. That's a lie. You don't go around telling lies. The devil cannot make you do anything you do whatsoever you please with your own willpower, and you cannot blame it on anybody else, your wife, your mother-in-law, your, your kids, your, uh, nobody, and including the devil. And so she missed it there. She deliberately did it. She got judged for it uh, for, because she was responsible, and you are responsible. I am responsible. Please let us know that. She says, the serpent has beguiled me. So Eve proclaimed the first deception under God's interrogation of her and Adam, and, and, and immediately God did something. Isn't that great? God moved to repair a breach. Uh, God, God moved to help a bad situation. Uh, God instantly uh, went into, uh, into action and says, I can do something about your problem. And it's exactly the same with you. Uh, when you have a problem, he can move into that problem. Ooh, you better believe it. <laughs> he can move into that problem, and he can help you. You're, just because you've fallen off the last rung of the social ladder is no sign God's given up on you. You might have spent years in prison, or you might have spent years in, in, in immoralities. God has not given up on you. God never gives up on anybody. God is not willing that any should be lost. That's the Bible. God is not willing. You know, uh, that willing comes from the word will, will. God, when he gave man his uh, suko, a soulish person, his Adamic person, he made it into three compartments, uh, your, your thinking area and your feeling area and your will area. So man in his soulical being is made up into three titanic areas uh, where he thinks the thing through and makes a decision, where he feels the thing through and makes a decision, and where he wills within himself through desire to do what he wants to do. And so it says God is not willing. In God's will, he moves after you. In God's will, he comes to save you. He comes to help you. He comes to redeem you. He comes to lift you. And in these lessons that we will be teaching related to the altars and the sacrifices under the Most High God. We're going to teach you how to come to God. <laughs> They're great, really. Uh, you won't ever forget it. And we trust that you will have a, a wonderful experience, just as Eve did, of coming back to God. Oh, she was glad for the tenderness of God. God said, I will do something. In Genesis 3 and 21, it says, Unto Adam and unto his wife did the Lord make coats of skin and clothe them. And so the first humans to live on the planet Earth, they, they, they stood by, they stood by, and they watched, they watched two innocent little animals, possibly lambs, very likely lambs, for, almost for sure lambs. He saw these innocent animals as, uh, as, they, as their life was taken, as their life was taken. He saw them, and, and, and he saw God himself I take those skins and fit them to their bodies 
and sew them too, they didn't fall off of them. And, and, and their first covering for their transgression, someone else gave their lives, and they saw it. They saw it. Now, that was the beginning of a covering for sin through, uh, through sacrifices and offerings and, and altars. The beginning of it was in the Garden of Eden with the first two people, Adam and Eve. And they had to be covered of their nakedness before God. They had to be covered for their transgression. And two innocent little creatures, animals, gave their coats. <laughs> Jesus gives himself so completely for you. Can you see it? Jesus gives himself so marvelously for you. Don't you know it? Jesus, aren't you thrilled about it? Isn't something moving inside of you right now? Saying, say, hey, hey, hey. Even though I've done things that are wrong and did them maliciously and did them intentionally and did them willfully, the Most High has a covering for me. That covering for you, of course, is Calvary. The Most High is, is sad that I am away from Him and He wants me back into His fellowship. Isn't that great? And that He has another that's helped me. I cannot help myself. He has another. With Adam and Eve, it was a, a little lamb which spoke of the great Lamb of God that was coming to save the whole world, whose name is Jesus. Oh, praise God forever. My friend, I can see thousands of people giving their hearts to Jesus right now, this very moment saying, hi, I see this thing clearer than I've ever seen it before. I see this thing better than I've ever seen it before. I'm more thrilled about this thing than I've ever been thrilled before. And they're saying, say, tell me more about these altars of God and these sacrifices of God, because God is the same. God is timeless. You see, God was, is, and shall be at the same time. I know you don't understand it. God created you a creature of time. In eternity, there's no time, and there's no age, and there's no space, and there's no, no shortage of energy. And so the things that limit you do not limit God at all, you see. And so when we come into his love, our transgressions are forgiven. And, and God has another to give themselves for us that we might have our sins all taken away. How, how glad we are uh, for such an amazing, such an amazing and such a wonderful. So these first humans uh, were covered. Their transgression was covered. Their nakedness was covered. Their rebellion was covered by two innocent little lambs. And, and, and these were given unto the Most High God. Therefore, God created the first altar on this earth. <laughs> Man did not do it. Uh, uneducated pagans didn't do it. No, of course not. The Almighty did it. He created the first one. He provided the first offering. The Most High did it. Uh, it was, Adam didn't cook it up in his brain. No. Adam stood and watched the Most High as he provided a sacrifice for the remission of his sins, for the forgiveness of his sins. So our first four parents had their nakedness covered by the innocent sacrifice of the slain lamb, uh, if it was a lamb. And this was a beginning and the birth of the first altars and sacrifices unto the Most High God, beginning with our first four parents. It was Adam and Eve, I am sure, who taught their own children and their own grandchildren how they could worship God, how they could get their sins covered, how they could get themselves forgiven, and how they could have their bodies to be covered with that sacrifice made by another, by an innocent little animal. And so how to worship God at an altar and how to receive forgiveness of their sins. So beginning at that point, generation after generation of Adam's posterity offered offerings upon altars and sacrifices upon altars. I, I, God made these things known unto them. And God uh, showed himself mighty and powerful and glorious uh, to them through the forgiveness of sins by, by this method. And so man can find that when he's transgressed, there is a new day and there is another way and that God uh, does not get discouraged with him and, and, and eliminate him uh, from his kindness, from his love and from his long suffering. Uh, but God cared and wrapped man, wrapped man around his great love 
and wrapped man around his great compassion so that man could know the Most High. And that means you, lady, that means you. Sitting there alone, that means you. Gentlemen, that means you right there. You might be smoking a cigar. You might be drinking a can of beer. Uh, that means you right there. Uh, you, you might have done so many things wrong. They're stacking up on you a mile high. God can move every one of them away from you. He has made provision for you. He made provision for Adam and for Eve. He can make provision for any emergency. You say, God doesn't know what I'm going to do. He can make a provision for it at that moment. He's already made provision for it. If you will accept it, if you will permit him, you will find that that supreme altar of Calvary works now. It works right now. It, it's, it's, uh, it's for you right now. It can remove your remorse. Oh, yes, it can. It, it, it can remove your condemnation. Romans 8 and 1 says, There is therefore now, say now, now, <laughs> there is therefore now no condemnation. Say no. It means it. No condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. If you will come to him now, uh, to, the, to the great altar of Calvary, where the sacrifice was the only begotten Son of God, uh, He, at this moment, will bring you into divine relationship with the Most High, and He will save you from your sins, and He will make you to be the person you dreamed you could be and you haven't been, that you wanted to be, but you didn't make it. You've fallen like Adam and Eve did. <laughs> yeah, just like they transgressed, you've done it too. Well, the same Heavenly Father that forgave them is still there. He hasn't gone out of business. He hasn't gone on a long journey. Uh, he, he hasn't quit. He hasn't become angry. Uh, he hasn't become disillusioned. He knows you better than you know yourself. And after he knows all about you, he loves you. He loves you more than he does the whole planet Earth. He says that one immortal soul is worth more than planet Earth. He's going to burn planet Earth one day. Uh, he's going to scorch the whole surface of its sin and let it be rebuilt and, and re remade with, with greater jewels on it, with more gold on it, uh, with more treasures on it, and we will have a new life and a new world to live on here because this one has become so tainted uh, from Lucifer uh, causing men to transgress against God. And how glad we are that at this moment there is an altar for you and there's a sacrifice for you. There's a Savior for you <laughs> right now, we would just be so glad if you would accept that one and believe in him and, and make him to be the greatest one of your total life. Won't you do it? Won't you do it right now? We want you to do it. We, we say that there is the, 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 the best thing that you can ever do is to give the Lord Jesus Christ the total life that you've had. In our lesson uh, that we will be pursuing uh, right after this one, and we, we, we want you not to miss it by any means, we will be taking you into the book that describes all of the offerings of God, what they mean and what they are and how they can help you and me even today, even though they have been done away with in Christ. What they mean will show you the greatness and the vastness and the majesty of our God. And so we certainly want you to join us and to go with us as we move into the book of Leviticus. We will, we will give you a synopsis of that book beginning in chapter 1 and show you how in every chapter throughout that book until the last chapter uh, in, in the book of, Gen of Leviticus, you ought to read that book, uh, and you'll see all of the altars of God and the whole story of, of these mighty altars that God has raised up and that they will bless. May I, may I, may I bless you right now? Father, I want to say thank you for the privilege of teaching. It is an honor to teach your people. And we want to accept it that way. We are honored to be in their home. Uh, we're we're some, in some of their bedrooms right now. Uh, we were in their den uh, where they're relaxed. And we we're in the dining room. We're in many places right now. And it's an honor that we respect so very deeply that we would never transgress against or take advantage of. It is such a sacred thing. And we thank you that we can bless this friend and ask you to permit sin to die and to go out of them and that you shall cover them like you covered Adam and Eve uh, from their shame. You can cover them from their shame of the past and blot it out of their memories to where they can live a new life in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe you to do it. I thank you for doing it. If you right now would obey 1 John 1 and 9, 
which says these words, if, that's the biggest word in the English language, if we would confess our sins, God, that's the biggest word in the English language, God, this God that we're talking about, will forgive you of all your sins and cleanse you from all your unrighteousness. Isn't that great? That's 1 John 1 and 9. It's for you. And then I want you to write and tell me about it. Say, I got it. I received it. Will you do that? I want you to do it in Jesus' name.